Well, welcome everyone to this episode of um, Stories for Healing. I want to welcome you back uh, if you've been here before and welcome you for the first time if you haven't. We have this uh, program every weekday at 2.30 Eastern on Facebook Live, and then it immediately goes over to YouTube. So if you've missed any of the stories or if you'd like to watch another one again, please, please visit us. And as you know, we have storytellers coming to us from around the world, from a variety of traditions, and telling all different sorts of stories. Today, I'm really pleased to be able to introduce you to Marilyn McPhee, who has a story for us. So Marilyn, please tell us a story. Thanks, Jim. I'd be happy to tell a story. I love these programs, and it's, it's a real honor to be included in them. My husband and I live in a house that's not large and our yard is really quite small. But I think that no matter the size or the location or the value in money of where you live, there are always things, sometimes small things that bring you joy. And one of the things that brings me joy about where I live is the flowering vine that blooms outside my kitchen window. It blooms every year in May. The first year that we moved into this house many years ago, our daughter Elizabeth was born on May 22nd. And when I looked out my kitchen window, there, were, there was a profusion of beautiful yellow flowers. And in the years that have followed, those flowers have come to be associated in my mind with my daughter. Every year they're there, and most years they've figured very prominently in her, in her um, birthday celebrations. Sometimes they're clipped into her hair as she goes off to school. Sometimes they're just in a vase or a bowl on the table. Sometimes they're on a package tied in with a ribbon. And more than once, they've been part of the decorations on her birthday cake but they always remind me of her. Now I should tell you that I have a son who was born on May 23rd and my husband's birthday is on May 26th, but somehow the flowers do not remind me of them, but just of Elizabeth. Now I'm not much of a gardener, but I was, I was interested in finding out just what kind of a vine that was. And so I looked it up and I found out that that has a scientific name. It's a Hibertia scandens. I have a hard time remembering that, but I can remember the common name, which is Guinea gold vine. And apparently it's a native of the Eastern coast of Australia. Well, that doesn't matter so much, except it helps me identify what it is that brings me joy. One year, it developed a sort of horrible black scale on it. And as I said, I'm not much of a gardener, but I did look up possible remedies. And so I went outside with a spray bottle of soapy water and sprayed it all over and then just hoped for the best. And it did seem to do the trick and I was quite relieved. Sometimes it looks like the flowers aren't going to show up. And early in May, I worry about that but they're always there by May 22nd. Now the house next door to ours has been, since we've lived here, a rental. There have been a succession of renters and for the most part, they've been really nice people, but because they don't own the house, they don't seem to ever take too much care about upgrading or even maintaining the house and yard. But last winter, everything changed. The house went up for sale and it was purchased by a family that moved in. And it was clear from the very beginning that they intended to make this place their own. So in the summer, when they came to us and said they wanted to replace the fence that was between our yard and theirs, we were pleased. A 40 year old wooden fence, it wasn't in very good condition and it definitely needed to be replaced. And when the neighbors said that they'd be happy to get all the all the materials and all the equipment, and they'd be happy to take down the old fence and build the new one. And all we'd have to do was just pay half. Well, that was a gift. Of course we agreed, what a deal. And then one day, as I looked out my kitchen window, I saw in the neighbor's yard, a stack of boards that were obviously intended for the new fence. And I thought, well, they're gonna start on that soon. 
And then suddenly it occurred to me that if they took down the old fence, they'd be taking down the Guinea gold vine too. And that made me sad. And I thought about whether I should say anything. I didn't want to be that neighbor. It was such a generous gift that they were giving to take down the old fence and to build a new one and do all the work themselves that I didn't want to be picky or demanding. I didn't really know them, still don't. But finally I thought, well, I'll just say something, something casual, not threatening, not demanding, but just explaining. So I opened up the app program on my phone and I typed in, thanks so much for uh, agreeing to replace the fence. It really needed it. That's very nice of you. If there's a chance that you could save the vine that's attached to our side of the fence, I'd like that. But if not, no problem, don't worry. And I pushed send. And then I thought, oh, maybe I should have explained a little bit more. So I opened up the app again and I typed in, uh, the reason that I like the vine so much is that when it flowers on my daughter's birthday, it always makes me think of her. But if you can't save it, that's okay. No problem. I understand. And I pushed send. A couple of days later, in the pile of fencing materials in the yard next door, I saw a long piece of, of lattice, wooden lattice, maybe eight feet tall. I wondered about that. But the next day, as they started taking down the old fence, I looked out my kitchen window and I saw my neighbor very carefully removing the vine from the old fence and attaching all of its tendrils to that piece of lattice. And then a couple of days later, when the fence, when the old fence was down and the new fence was finished, she came over again and very carefully attached that piece of lattice with the vine still on it to the new fence. So now when I look out my kitchen window, I can see that Guinea gold vine. And I also see evidence of my neighbor's kindness. And how's it doing? Well, I'm glad you asked because it looks greener and healthier than ever. And I anticipate that come May 22nd, it will be filled with those beautiful yellow flowers that I love so much. Robert Frost wrote a poem about fences. And I think most people know that poem and know the last line, good fences make good neighbors. I'm well aware that he wrote that with considerable irony. However, I have to say that when I look out my window, and see that new fence, I know without any irony at all that I've got a nice new fence and I've also got a nice new neighbor. And that is my story about the Guinea gold vine and a new fence and a new neighbor. Oh, what a wonderful story. What a wonderful story. And now has your daughter met these new neighbors yet? She hasn't. She doesn't live nearby. Uh -huh. um, but every year when her birthday comes around, she hasn't lived at home for many years now. She's married and has a family of her own. Mm -hmm. But when her birthday comes around, I always snap a picture of the latest, uh -huh. um, the latest flower and send it to her in an email with some birthday greetings. Sure, sure. So I don't know if I've told her this story. I don't think I have, but yeah. uh, she'll be getting that picture again. <laughs> I'm sure. Maybe even with the picture of the new neighbor, who knows? Maybe so. Do you know that since COVID, I don't even know the first name of that wonderful. Oh name. my goodness. I know. Can you believe it? I mean, we've waved at each other from a distance and that's, that's right. pretty much all. And I've seen her outside my kitchen window when she was attaching that vine to the, to the lattice. And I, and I waved at her and, and called out my thanks, but I don't know her, sure. but I do know her. I yes, know yes. what she's like. Yes. Almost um, an instance of the kindness of strangers, you know? It is. Uh, yeah. Oh, it really is. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow, what, what, what amazing lessons we can learn from just, just that little act of kindness. Yeah, really. It meant so much to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm so glad you sent the second email, I, the, uh, the, the revised email to say, 
Yeah, you know, this does mean something to me. That was that was good. Yeah. Well, folks, um, here we have another episode of Stories for Healing. Um, I, I, you know, they always leave me feeling warm or touched or something. I hope they do the same for you. I hope you share them with other people uh, because it's easier than sharing a lattice and a, and a, and a creeping vine. Um, and it may be inspiring some good growth between you. Um, but most of all, you know, share that kindness that, that uh, we, all, we all want for each other and we all want for ourselves. And uh, maybe who knows what will spring up in the spring for you. So thanks again. Hope to see you next episode. Bye-bye.